Hello and welcome to this short tutorial of one of the features in Studiographer. I'm Joe Wetzel, the creator of the program. What you see in front of here, in front of you, is the uh, initial screen after you've downloaded and installed and started it up. You've got two ways to create a new city. The first is to kind of go in a step-by-step -step process where you can kind of tweak the coastline before you go and maybe add a river and then uh, change that maybe before you add uh, the major roads and the street network and the buildings and so on. So it kind of gives you an opportunity to, to play around with things before you move on to that next step to make, make the next step easier. Um, second option is to do it all in one step, which is kind of cool for demo purposes, and that's what we'll do here in a moment. Then we've got load a city, and then we've got upgrade a upgrade your license, um, which just allows you to unlock several of the features that we have in the paid version. So what we're going to do here is uh, focus on the functionality of using additional icon sets. Uh, there's one critical step that needs to be done if you're going to use an icon, icon pack that we have. Um, and it, there, there's there's a little bit of a nuance to it. So what you see here is the um, uh, details of the city that you can set, and you can skim that if you haven't seen it before. The important thing is we want to override the data that are that, that makes up this map. So for each building that we're going to put on the map, what are the details there? Who lives there? If it's a store, what do they have for sale? That sort of thing. And that's powered by a gen settings.properties file. Uh, so we're going to pick the medieval gen settings properties file because we're going to use the, the medieval icon pack here. Um, we have several icon sets available, and this is uh, one of the more popular ones. Then tied with that, we want to override the map items that are actually the actual icons that are going to be available on the map. So we go ahead and pick that, and we use the adjacent file chooser to pick that the map items properties file so we sit click OK and it's now it's reading through and setting up uh, it's got 200 or so each icon pack that we have has 200 and so 200 or so icons available and um, it's loading those all in creating the data structures to create the map and so forth uh, so that just takes a moment to do especially since we're using an icon icon set the other icon sets, ooh, there we go. Um, but the other icon sets that we have available um, are uh, there's a fantasy only icon set, there's a um, Western icon set, there's uh, modern, and then there's a futuristic icon set, which actually splits it up between a clean look, kind of Star Trek, uh, a, a Blade Runner look, kind of a gritty look, uh, and then there's a, um, a retro Buck Rogers kind of look. Um, but it's uh, pretty much, well, it still has some more buildings, so it's trying to, it, it picks like the least common buildings and puts them down first, and then it puts, you know, more and more common buildings until it eventually is putting down all the different um, houses um, on the map. But if I zoom in, you can see that the quality of the graphics is really, really good. Um, they're designed that you could print these out. You know, this is something where you could print this building out at, say, um, an inch across, and it's still going to look good. The letter number codes there are just telling you um, what quadrant it's in, it's in. If you imagine a number of letters across the top of the map and a number of letters on the side of the map, um, that would tell you what quadrant it's in. So if you export the data later, you could um, more easily find the building. But the way that you find a building um, while you have the map running, while you have the program running, is you go to this view edit note, and that's going to add on these little uh, yellow squares on each building, and you can click it. And this actually happens to be a magic shop, um, and so it has what's in, what's available here, and this just happens to have one potion, I guess. Um, but if we pick the next building over here, this might be an, uh, somebody selling old clothes. And it's two people, and we get some quirks about those people. And over here, we've got a furrier. So you get the idea. You can get all those, and so that's being driven by that that gen settings file, and so that's an XML file that you could edit. But um, that's kind of the key thing to show in the program. Also, the other thing, a little nuance that I think I talk about in one of the other videos, but just to be sure you know about it, is uh, you could pick a particular building type, and then only that building type is going to be highlighted. So now if I zoom out some, we can look for, are there any blacksmiths in this neighborhood? No, not yet. But if I pan around some, 
I bet, or maybe zoom out, I bet our city should be set up to have one or two blacksmiths for a city of this size. Oh, I see. I forgot to put the view edit back on so that I can see the blacksmiths. And there we go. It's here. So if I zoom back in, whoops, wrong button. If I zoom back in, and I know it was over on the one side of the, there we go. Here's our actual blacksmith. There's a master, there's an apprentice. Um, if you want to write in a description of what the building looks like or what the, any other details that aren't here, you can have a field for that. Here's who works there. And then here's all the things that they have for sale at this particular store. So that about covers this little demo of um, a cityographer. I hope that it was useful. Again, the key thing is, and I'll pull that screen back up again, but the key thing here is to remember that when you're creating a new map, either way, either, either, either process for creating a new map, you're going to want to change this drop down and the adjacent file chooser, as well as this drop down and its file chooser. So I appreciate your attention. Um, I hope you enjoy the, the software. I hope you make some cool maps and thank you.